coming down to turn one, one thing to note, it's downhill. That's the interesting part about this track. You still have some crazy elevation changes. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here for another track guide, and this time it is the Nürburgring Grand Prix track, because this weekend is the Eiffel Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. Now, the last time F1 raced at this track was in 2013, and they're returning there this year because they need races to fill in the schedule. And it's also one of my favorite tracks, so I thought I'll give you another guide. Now, an interesting fact before we begin. So this race is happening there, obviously, October. So it's gonna be raining all week long, and it's gonna be raining predicted for the race. As I'm filming, this is before the race. A couple interesting facts. The last two times it rains at an F1 race, both races were in Germany, Hockenheim Ring in 2018, Hockenheim Ring in 2019. Another interesting fact, you might remember, last time it rained, Mercedes completely destroyed their home race, but then the race before that, they got a 1-2 finish. Anyways, let's get into the video. So starting off a lap at the Nürburgring, it's not too bad, this is the Grand Prix track, not the Nordschleife, in case you were wondering. The Grand Prix track used to be what's called the Sudschleife, but that was so dangerous that they got rid of it, rebuilt this track so they could hold a Formula One race again after F1 stopped racing at the Nordschleife in 1976 after Nicky Lauda's crash. So exiting the final turn, you're gonna be wanting to get on all the curb, and the first thing you're gonna wanna be looking for, sorry about all the noise, steering wheel, very noisy with these curbs. But the first thing you're gonna wanna be looking for is the DRS line. Now DRS, drag reduction system, helps you on the straight line, very important for top speed. So DRS line at this track, not too hard to find. It's right there, that white line in front of us. And you're gonna continue down the straightaway. Now the interesting thing about the Nürburgring is the straightaways aren't that long, yet it usually produces good racing. With the newer hybrid F1 cars, we'll see if that's still the case. Coming down to turn one, one thing to note, it's downhill. That's the interesting part about this track. You still have some crazy elevation changes, despite being a very short track. And the first part we're gonna to come to is this braking zone. Now one thing you might not notice is there's actually a slight kink. So you'll see the drivers in the onboard, they will turn their wheel slight to the right, and then they'll brake. However, when you're braking, you obviously wanna be going in a straight line as that's most effective. So you're coming down, and then you're gonna to wanna to be braking right about, right after the 100 meter board. And the important thing here, because it's such a wide braking zone, is you wanna set yourself up for that apex. One thing that's also interesting you may notice is the track gets very wide at turn one. So often you'll see cars go two or three wide. Now again, as you're coming down, turn one's very interesting because you actually don't want to hit the apex. The reason is it's actually one of the steepest parts of the track and you'll see on the curb that it's very easy to bottom out. If you bottom out, obviously the car's going to slide. You could damage the car, you'll lose control. There's less grip, a whole bunch of other reasons as well. Coming out of turn one, your whole goal is the exit and you're going to want to go two wheels off and set up your left wheels to hit that curb. Now, after you finish turn one, you're gonna wanna keep the wheel pointing to the right because you need to get over for this next left-hand turn. Now, it's a late apex turn and you're essentially just gonna downshift if you need to and lift off the gas. This is a 2017 Formula One car. 2020 cars are gonna have more downforce. Exiting here, you're gonna wanna be as far to the right as possible and to get a little bit of a downhill. And because of that, the momentum's gonna be shifted forward. Slide your brake balance rearwards if needed since there's more weight on the front end already. Now, the goal here is you need to get the car rotated, because this is kind of an S, but it's very tight. So you have this first left-hand turn, you're gonna to stay to the left, and then you're gonna to wanna to gently slide the car to the right. Use the curb if needed, you usually don't, because on the exit, you need to take advantage of the cement here from the 24-hour track, two wheels off, and then set yourself up for your next braking zone, where it gets to a little more high speed. So coming down through here, braking right as this white line continues, down a couple gears, now this curb on the left, it's very angled. You don't usually want to hit it. Plus it's actually a bank turn, so you'll have plenty of grip anyways. Again, brake, turn in, bank turn as well. You don't need to. It's a tightening radius, but on the exit, use all the curb, go into that green cement, plenty of grip. Heading down the hill here, you'll be building up quite a bit of speed. And the important thing at braking is you're gonna to want to brake in a straight line using that cement, and you're gonna to want to point the car right at the apex of the hairpin. In the hairpin, downshift to gear in the middle if you need to, but you need to make sure you rotate the car because it's much tighter than it looks. Then on the exit, use up all the curb, including the green cement, and then get yourself over to the right for the Schumacher S because this S turn is flat out. Don't want to hit any of the curbs. You can hit them. It's not bad to hit them, but you don't need to. And of course, in the rain, since it's a painted surface, you never know the situation. Now, this next turn up here, braking right at the green, turn in, semi-bank turn. Don't need to use the curb, there's plenty of grip here. You don't need to exit wide because you need to stay to the left, come back to the right, because this right-hand turn is actually pretty high speed. And here, you're just feathering the throttle, trying to get the best exit as possible, because there's a good overtaking zone here. 
On the exit, use as much curve as you need. And again, you can go into this event, it's not bad. You might have just seen back there and I'll reverse to show you. There's your DRS line. Now, one interesting thing is this turn up here. Uh, it's a bit tight for a DRS zone, so I don't know if DRS will be activated before or after the FIA hasn't released that yet. I'm assuming it will be, since the cars have plenty of downforce to take this flat out. And again, through this turn, you know, you're working on getting the slipstream and avoiding dirty air. So line-wise, there's plenty of grip depending if you're going inside or outside. Uphill turn, so you can slide the brake balance forward, since the car has all the momentum shifted on the rear, since the weight is there. And through here, you're braking for this chicane. Now this chicane, a lot of drivers love, including me, because it's just a decent overtaking zone. But the important thing is you want to attack these curbs. And these curbs are much harder than they look. The first part of the curb, and I'll shift to the front view, is you'll see it's completely flat, so you can easily attack the curb. The second part, though, is it's what I call a semi-sausage curb. Now, it's not quite a sausage curb because it's not that full, rounded, yellow or orange surface that if you hit, you know, it'll just jerk the car. But you'll notice it's definitely not flat. It's going to upset the car. So you're going to want to be as precise as possible, but you don't want to run it over. However, if you get the wheel slightly on it, it might help rotate the car. We'll see this weekend drivers experimenting to see what's the quickest line. So you're going to attack it on the left, and then this next right hand, exact same style with the curb. So attack the curb there. On the exit here, get on the curb if you need to, but most car setups you won't need to. Now this next area is a decent spot to overtake, but you have to keep into account there's the next DRS zone. So it's not always smart to overtake here. However, this hairpin up here is a very interesting last turn. So you turn in, and it's actually wider than you think, but you don't necessarily want to get near the apex. Reason is, it's all about getting that perfect angle on the exit because you can use the whole curb and kind of ride on it. It's a decently flat curb. And then from there, get back on the DRS, and that's a lap at the Nürburgring Grand Prix track. So now, I'm going to show you a hot lap of the track so you can see what it's like at full speed. All right, and there's my hot lap. Surprisingly, on the first hot lap I did, I'm actually happy with that. Could I have gone faster? Yes, and a couple practice laps I was doing before I got in the 132s. But just as a general reference, I think that's a good enough lap. Sum up this track, personally, I love it because it's got a mix of everything and the elevation changes, and I think it's just a really cool track. And it's also a pretty short track when you consider it, but I just, I don't know, there's something about this track that I really love. It's also one of the earliest tracks I ever knew, so that's kind of special to me as well. So just as an interesting reference here, this track, because it has a mix of everything, generally cars that are always strong no matter what tracks they go to do well here. You look at the last race in 2013, Sebastian Vettel won, and then your other two cars were the two Lotuses. Red Bull was the strongest that year, Mark Webber didn't really have a good race, ton of reasons behind that, but the Lotus cars were always generally strong in whatever track they went to, and that's why they got the double podium there. Now, my predictions for this weekend, and this is of course going to be wrong because I've never predicted F1 correctly, because it's going to rain, I'm going to say Lewis Hamilton's going to win. Second place, I'm going to give it to Max Verstappen. He's very good in the rain. The Red Bull car seems strong this year. And third place, and this is a bit of a risky one, I'm going to go with Lance Stroll. Now, you might say, 
what are you doing predicting Lance Stroll? You might remember he got the podium in Monza, but he is very good in the rain, and that racing point car has been really impressive all year long, although it's really a Mercedes, whatever you want to call it. So that's my prediction for this weekend. It's obviously going to be wrong, well, it could be right, but let's see how this goes. So let me know if you guys want to see more track videos like this, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.